Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Katrina and this is Floss Tube number five. I hope you've had a good week. Our week was a lot calmer than they have been recently. Um, and we also uh, added some little members to our small farm. So I think they're coming in right now. I thought you guys might want to take a peek at them. If you're on, if you follow me on Instagram at Cat T Quilts, you've seen these little guys, but this is one of our Buff Orpington chicks, not Buff, Lavender Orpington chicks. So they're about three days old. We just got two. Um, we like to add a couple of chicks to our, our laying flock each year um, so that we keep getting lots of eggs, but thank you for bringing him in. There's our little Lavender Orpington baby. So that was some exciting happenings this week. We also had um one of our trees is an old it's not a cottonwood and it's not a willow but it's one of those trees that grow down by the river and um when they get old they tend to rot and the big parts of them can fall off and that is what happened to this tree we had an idea that it might and we were planning on um having my dad come over and help us break it down this summer and now we don't have to because in the middle of the night I heard this giant whoomp and I just thought like a huge wind gust or even like a tornado had slammed wind against the house, a small tornado. Um, you know, your sleep brain doesn't always think clearly. So I didn't know what had happened. And I looked out the window and here was this huge branch, like as big as a tree type branch, like, um, uh, in the yard and so it it just worked out so well that it there was no wind and it just fell straight down it didn't hit the house which was next to it it didn't destroy anything in the yard it just fell to the ground so my husband and a friend of ours broke it up yesterday and i'm gonna try some uh hugel culture uh in my garden so i'm gonna dig a shallow trough and i'll lay the branches and the logs in there and then cover it with dirt and compost and um, different things like that and see what kind of garden bed I can make up. Um, we've been continuing on with decluttering um, with my mom passing away and some of her possessions being given to us. Uh, the idea of bringing more stuff into our house was super overwhelming. So we're continuing to pretend we're moving with the fly lady plan and um, getting rid of uh, basically, we pack everything up or pretend we're going to pack it up and anything we wouldn't want to take with us, uh, we donate or give away or sell. Um, give away and donate is the same. Throw away or sell. So uh, we're working on that. It's chaotic. It always gets worse before it gets better, um, but we're starting to see some progress. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit today about, um, I kind of hate the phrase self-care, um, but I also... I think it's important that we are um, being intentional about um, taking care of ourselves um, emotionally, spiritually, physically. So um, as crafters, I think that's even more important, maybe not more important, but um, we tend to sit a lot and we also can find ourselves hunched over a project, whether you're sewing or, you know, I get to where I'm kind of right up here doing my little cross stitch projects, um, which probably need, means I need some sort of frame. <laughs> but um, I've decided to kind of come up with a plan to counteract that. So I've been walking to the post office each day to get the mail. Uh, I used to do a lot of the Sarah Beth yoga. She's on YouTube and she has videos that are as short as 10 minutes. And I told myself recently that I can handle 10 minutes worth of yoga in the morning. It's not a huge commitment, but I feel so much better and it loosens up my shoulders um, and even my hips from sitting. So I'm going to do 10 minutes of yoga. And then um, I'm also being more intentional about meal planning. So I am using, um, which I've used before, the Trim Healthy Mama meal plan, um, which is sort of like a gentle carb um, plan. So you eat a lot of whole foods and then you can eat certain amounts of um, uh, carbs that are like oats and rice and sweet potatoes. Uh, you just have to make sure you don't eat them with too much fat so that your body can use up those sugars. Um, 
what else? Oh, sleep is another really important thing. Uh, I've read that if you're not getting enough sleep, then it can be a big determining factor in whether or not you're making good food choices. So when we're tired, our willpower sort of ebbs and we tend to crave carbs and sugar. So um, my sleep extravaganza, I've just, I, you know, over the past few months, I've been really stressed, I guess. And um, I I look at my Fitbit in the morning to see how my sleep is. And it used to have these long periods of like deep sleep. And now it's just all these spikes of restless sleep. And so I was, I was starting, you know, I was feeling bad. So I started looking at this, uh, the app um, and it made me realize I needed to do something to be sleeping better. So I drink chamomile tea with collagen in it. I take a valerian supplement. Um, uh, I take magnesium. And then more recently, I started taking hemp seed oil, which it's not like the CBD oil where it's supposed to help with your sleep. It does have a lot of really good benefits, but... Um, I had read that some people still, you know, just with the benefits that it gives you, they start feeling better, less muscle aches, things like that, which is part of why I have trouble sleeping. My shoulders hurt after a while. Um, and so I started taking that and it's been pretty dramatic as far as like what my sleep app shows. I'm back to having those longer periods of restful sleep. So um, I would love to hear what your um, self-care tips are, especially in relation to being a crafter. Um, I think, you know, like we can continue to craft longer, um, like into our older years if we take care of ourselves. And then we also feel better and can do more um, uh, if we're feeling good. So that's um, our welcome and intro. Uh, I hope you've had a good week and gotten some good progress on your projects. Uh, you can come to Instagram or my Facebook and tell me or show me um, if you want to submit pictures on my Facebook page. I would love to hear what you've been working on. Um, I'm also looking for a sew along. So if you know of any that are being planned, I think it would be really fun to participate in one of those. All right, so I'm going to move on to mail call. And this week, I was really excited to uh, receive this uh, giant package of thread. Um, I got, I was uh, sent these from the Easy Stitch, and um, they sent these to me to try out and to um, share with you about. So um, I got a 50 pack of threads and there's no repeats. And this is not all of them. I have some set aside because I have some little um, experiments in mind, but I was so impressed with how beautiful these threads were. Um, I compared them to the DMC threads that I have and they seem very similar in quality. Um, they are a little bit more flexible. Um, they're very soft. Uh, I haven't stitched them up yet, so I'm going to keep you guys updated as to how they look when they're stitched up. But they're beautiful and they feel really nice. I'm excited to try them. Um, I'm going to tell you more about them here. So each skein is 8.7 yards, which is the same as the DMC threads. They compare to the DMC threads. So um, I'll just show you one of these. So uh, this one is 433. And this is the DMC equivalent. And so um, they are both numbered the same and the, the colors are to match. Um, the color selection is amazing. They have 447 colors. DMC uh, has some new colors, so they have 489. Uh, if you bought the 489 colors from DMC, it's $299.99 right now. It says it's on sale. The original price was $484.11. Easy Stitch has 447 colors, um, which this is less than 50, um, and their price is $89.97. They're a Pennsylvania-based company, and um, they mostly sell in the larger packets. You can get as few as eight, though. They have some gradient packs, uh, from what I saw, those gradient packs, the floss is 100% cotton, uh, mercerized cotton. If you get the large packs, 
uh, with all the different colors, it's uh, a cotton blend. Um, and I was also reading that with the cotton blend, the polyester helps them retain their color. So you don't have to worry as much about them fading as the, the thread ages. So there's a, a positive note there. Um, so I told you, you can buy all 447 of them for $89.97. The other purchase options were the gradient pack, which I told you about. There's eight skeins in there. You can also do uh, skeins of your choice. You can get as few as eight and as many as 150. So uh, if you get, um, Oh, sorry, you can get as few as 50. If you buy 50, they're 43 cents a skein. If you buy 150, they're 26 cents a skein and you get to choose your colors. Um, the Colorful Creations Pack comes, so this is, you just get random colors, but there's no repeats. You can choose anywhere from 25 of those on up to, like I said, the 447. They're a cotton blend and they're color fast. Um, I want to talk about them being color fast. I was curious about that. And so I did some experiments. Um, so what I did first was I got a um, Q-tip and I got a glass of water and wet it. Dear Liza, dear Liza. Um, and then I just took the thread. Let's see, I should take one of them. This is 321. Um, and I just took the thread and I rubbed it on the wet Q-tip to see if I could get any color transfer. And there's no color transfer. Which side is my camera on? There we go. It's not focusing very well, but there's no color transfer. So that was good. It passed that test. And then when I am quilting and I'm worried about a fabric bleeding, I will get a cup of warm water and I'll put a little scrap of the fabric in there to see if it bleeds. And um, so I did that with some of the thread. I tried a dark green, and these have been in here for at least 10 minutes, and there's no bleeding there. And then I tried a dark red maroon, and again, there's no bleeding of the color. So it would seem that they are color fast. So yay. Um, they uh, also sell cross stitch kits. So I thought that might be kind of a fun way to try out the company. Um, with, uh, you know, just being able to get some specific colors and get them right into a project and try them out. Um, yeah, so I'm kind of a hard sell. Um, I like companies that I have experience with and that I know are reliable. So when a new company comes along, um, you know, I wonder if things are too good to be true and where they come from. But I've been in communication with the, um, the company and they've answered all of my questions and I've done some research uh, and I would have no problem at this point buying from them. I haven't stitched up a project yet. Um, so my experience is limited. Uh, as I go along, I'm gonna keep you guys updated. Um, uh, and I'll probably next week, I'll maybe make up a little sample of the DMC threads versus the easy stitch threads so we can see them uh, on a project. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit, hang on, let me scooch my notes. I wanted to talk a little bit about how well they match DMC. So I'm pretty impressed with how they look. There's just some slight variance in a couple of the colors, but they're close enough that you could use them as the called for thread in a project, and I think it would still look the same. But if you were going to use them in correlation with the DMC thread in a project, I don't know if you'd notice the difference, but they are a little bit different, and so I would be worried about that. So I just um, chose some that I had the same color, um, as with the DMC as the easy stitch so that we could see. So this is 817. And I'll turn that around, 817. And I would say that um, the DMC, and maybe what I'm seeing is I think that when the cotton is mercerized, it makes it a little bit shiny. And so the DMC, the color doesn't look different, but it does look a little bit shinier. So this top one is the DMC, the bottom one is the Easy Stitch thread. I've got a bunch here, but I'll maybe just pick out some. Um, 
to show you that I'll show you some that I think are really close and maybe some that I think are a little more different. So now I've got 931. And again, I think it just comes down to it being shinier. But I think it's the same color. Um, this one I think is a little more where the colors don't match quite as well, but they're, they're decent. Um, there we go. So this is 956. The bottom one is easy stitch. The top one is DMC. I am going to, um, say that a lot of my thread is from someone that gave it to me. So it's not new. So maybe take it all with a grain of salt because it might be a little bit different because of age. It is 100% cotton, the DMC, so it may have changed a little bit, potentially. Okay, um, I don't know if there's any others. I showed you the 433. I think that one's pretty close. And hopefully these are coming through. I'm probably holding these all up in there blurry so I'm just holding up blurry blobs of color at you and there is 700 so like I said I think you could use them to kit up a project and it would look like the pattern is intended to look um but I'm not sure that you'd want to mix them so um I do have an affiliate link that I'm going to put in the description box if you buy the um pack of 150 threads you can get 30 percent off they do also have some other offers um that um i'm not affiliated <laughs> with the other offers i guess you would say um where you can get free threads and just pay shipping so um you can look into those as well if you want all right i think that's all i want to talk about the easy stitch threads for if you have any questions about these let me know or if you want to try one, let me know. Um, I have uh, some of my multiples of colors. I could send out one if someone's interested in them and wants to try. So I don't have any, I'm going to move on. I don't have any finishes. Um, I do have some progress. So I'm going to show you that. So Coupe Almanac is what I'm working on. And May is the rooster that I'm doing. And so uh, this is Charles Rupert Barney the first, and that's how he's coming along. Um, I guess I'll hold it. How long does this? I'll do it too. Um, I just love how it kind of seems to come alive as you stitch. Like the shading in him starts to come out and he gets legs <laughs> and a tail. I finished his little face. So um, this week I did finish like his belly and legs and the white around his eye. And then I've moved on to that section of his tail. So I need to finish that lower section of his tail, the top, and then there's um, a spray of flowers along the bottom and the word May above his back. So hopefully before the end of May, I'll get that finished. All right, um, the other progress I have is some quilt progress. I don't know where I'll just stitch this right there. All right, so Pat Sloan has her home is block of the week, and I got a little bit behind, so I'm starting to catch up. So I don't know what numbers these are. I think 14, 15, and 16 is what they are. So here is possibly 14. It's a cute little house. Um, she called this one Put Your Feet Up, and so I chose the musically themed fabric because uh, I like to sit and listen to my daughter play the piano. Um, and so uh, I just like the idea of our, our house being surrounded with music. So there's that one. Um, I made this basket block. It's, what do you call it when it's set? Can't remember. Um, anyway, so I've got this basket block. And I think this was called Sweet Dreams. And she was wondering if you have um, a quilt in your room. I don't. We have a quilt on the couch and two of the kids have a quilt. I don't have one. Um, it's making me a little bit crazy because this is just crooked enough to bother me. I tried to re-sew it and then I think I just made the seam too thick. So I'm going to take that out and re-sew it. Otherwise, it'll just annoy me. 
And then um, this one is still on my project board, which I covered just in some flannel that I had um, with dogs on it. So it always looks a little weird, but um, anyway, so this one is laid out. Let me get it to where you can see it. This one is laid out and I haven't sewn it yet because those stripes in the middle, the ticking stripes, um, are not quite what I want. I had another stripe that I really loved, but I, it was scrap fabric that I had gotten from somewhere, a garage sale or, you know, whatever. And um, I think it was a polyester blend and it was shrinking when I would press it. So then it was pulling everything crooked. So um, I don't know if you can see, the pattern fabric is from a line called Harbor Springs. So it's sort of like coral. And I don't know <laughs> what those other bits are, but it's a little bit nautical. And so I loved the stripe in it. Um, and so I was hoping this stripe would work, but to me, it's, it's more of a cream background rather than a white background and it just looks dirty. So I'm still contemplating this one, but, and also the way Pat had it, these were all the same color and for some reason it bothered me. So I went with a patchwork, um, cause there's no quilt police, right? So I can do what I want. Okay. So that is my progress in quilting. Um, so for, uh, sorry, I keep jumping ahead and then I have to go back and explain what I'm going to talk about. For um, Stitch Mania, my plan was to set up a little YouTube curriculum for myself called Stitch School and um, just watch videos, take notes, try things so that I improve my work by the end of May. So what I started with was Jan Hicks Beginner Series and I'm really enjoying this. Uh, she does a good job. She's a good teacher. Uh, the first video was about kits um, which was helpful, but I'm not going to use a kit. Actually, I might use it. Never mind. Not related to this, but I might use a kit. The second video was starting your first stitches. So she did talk about the loop method, but I really like how she catches the tail of her floss. I don't know if I could even show you. I didn't prepare anything. You'll have to go watch her video. She, um, starts her floss on the front and goes underneath to where she's gonna start her stitches and leaves that little bit of a tail on the top. So then as she stitches along, she doesn't have to hold the thread underneath. She can just see that it's still there and catch it in her stitches. And um, I thought that was brilliant because um, that's part of why I really hate <laughs> that method of starting is because I'm constantly flipping it back and forth um, to see where the tail is. Um, what else did she talk about? Oh, she discusses the order of stitching on the pattern. So finding the middle, um, deciding where you're going to start. And that really confused me at the beginning. And it was good to have um, just someone explain why you start in a certain way. And then um, tidy stitches. She discusses that and possibly using railroading. I realized when she was talking about that, that I make my stitches really tight. I think it's from quilting. Uh, putting on binding because I just like, I don't know, I don't scrunch it. Like it's not um, scrunching. I don't know what the word is that I wanted there, but I make them tight because I want it secure against the fabric. But I, I think I hold a little too much tension then in my cross stitch. So I'm, I'm working on that. I don't want to change it too much. Like while I'm in the middle of this guy, because I don't want it to look different, but I am trying to be more aware of it. Um, she also discussed marking your charts. So she uses a colored pencil and marks through. And I was wondering, um, so these are, these are copies. Do you um, mark up your copies? Hang on. Do you mark up, let me just, I'm gonna show you this. So if I buy, those are PDFs. And so um, I just printed them. That's what I want to say. And, but if you buy like a pattern that comes pre-printed, like a, a hard copy pattern, do you mark on those or do you make a copy of your pattern and do you find that it shows up well enough um, is what I'm wondering. So if someone wants to tell me in the comments what sort of experience they've had with marking their patterns and um, 
any information about that. That would be helpful to me. That's something I, I need to learn about. Um, I, ba -da -ba -ba. Yeah. All right. So that was as far as I got with Jan Hicks and her beginning series. Um, I'm excited to use her videos. I think I'm mostly going to focus on hers. Um, oh, I did... Um, I did go to uh, like a tutorial. It was a live tutorial, uh, like a class that Cross Stitcher Magazine was doing. This one was free. And then future ones you can buy and pay for. But they had a beginner cross stitch class as well. And um, that's been good. I haven't watched the whole thing. One little tip that I did um, not know is she said to pull from the number side of the label and you'll be less likely to um, have your fabric knot up. So I didn't know that. That was good to know. Um, all right, I'm going to move on. I think there was something else I was going to talk about. But for, no, I do know, but I don't have enough information. So I'll tell you guys later. So haul, I do not have plans. I feel like when I see a lot of what other people are doing, like all I'm stitching on is my little rooster and he's taking a while and other people have all sorts of projects. Um, and maybe I should just stick with one, but it kind of seems fun to have more going. So uh, when I bought the Cross Stitcher magazine, it had this Biscornu uh, pin cushion. What does it say? Buds and Blooms pin cushion kit. And um, I'm going to change the bottom fabric. I don't love a green polka dot. I like polka dot, but not green. Um, I love green and I love polka dot, but not together. So I'm going to change the fabric, but um, I think this is really cute. And I would like to have a little project that I could display sooner rather than later. So I'm going to start working on that. Um, I am now going to finish with a giveaway. Uh, in celebration of uh, Stitch Mania, I have been seeing um, some really cute patterns, which is her title, a Cute Patterns by Maria is the maker of those. So she has an Etsy shop and she has 12 pages of beautiful patterns and I have gone through a couple of times and I just keep favoriting a whole bunch of them. <laughs> Uh, I, I went through once and favored it a bunch and then I wanted to do one of her patterns as a giveaway and as I was looking I was like how did I miss these there's more that I like so eventually I'm going to order some for myself as well so the one I'm going to use um, is in the photograph here and it's called tea with milk the, the pattern she has is so beautiful and I would love for you to answer um, a question and use the word tea in your answer to enter the giveaway. So you must be 18 years or older because I need to be able to ask for your address. You need to be a subscriber, I'll check that. And then do not say the word giveaway because I want the giveaway to be for um, the followers of this channel, not some random person who searches giveaway. So the question I want you to answer is what is your favorite tea? All right, use the word tea, T-E-A, and uh, no variations of that. Um, my favorite tea is Stash Irish Breakfast Tea. I've been drinking it for at least 14 years. I know I was drinking it when my daughter was born and maybe longer than that. And I just like it because I tend to oversteep my tea and it doesn't get uh, bitter um, and, and it's nice and strong. I like a good strong tea. Um, I put a little half and half in it. So tell me about your favorite tea. At night with my chamomile tea, I've really been enjoying that and it got me wondering if there's maybe others I would like to try because I've used stash for so long, maybe in the afternoons, it would be fun to try something different. Um, oh boy, I don't have any shout outs as to who I'm watching. I don't have any planned. I will tell you who I really like to watch. I like Mouse Potato Designs. I like to watch Just Keep Stitching, Jan Hicks, uh, I like the Fat Quarter Shop Floss Tube. Um, Pat Sloan talks a little bit about cross stitch and hers. Lori Holt, I mean, those are kind of the, the main ones. Oh, uh, Be More Creative. She um, is close to getting 1,000 subscribers and is doing a 900 subscribers giveaway this week if you want to go over to her page. And she has a free pattern, her first pattern that she made. Um, I just watched her video today, um, and I like uh, a lot of what she has. Um, yeah, I think that's it. So I'll link those in the information page. I'll have my Facebook and Instagram down there. 
don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Um, I go through the sh and kind of do show notes, so there will be all sorts of links and information down there. If you have any questions for me, just put it in the comment box. All right. Have a great week, you guys. I hope you get lots of stitching done. Thanks. Bye.